Okay, we are cooking, I think. Um, hey guys, Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. On screen with me here is my buddy Billy from the UK. Say hi, Billy. Hello, man. <laughs> Billy runs Anxiety United, anxietyunited.co.uk. Oh, anxiety, and.com now. And yeah, .com, yeah. That's right, anxietyunited.com in the UK. And uh, Billy and I crossed paths many, many years ago. I don't know. It's been, it's been a while, right? It's got to be 12, 13 years, I think. I'm, something along those lines, I'm guessing. Uh, initially on YouTube when we were both struggling with anxiety issues way back in, you know, what the kids call the day. And, uh, you know, we became friends. We're still friends now. And we are going to do a series of uh, video and podcast episodes based on sort of an anxiety 101 course. This is it. This right? is it. Right. The kind of the basics. This is the meat and potatoes of how you have to approach recovering from anxiety issues. And we're going to take you kind of step through step by step through some basic principles. And I think one of the best things about the way we're going to do this and jump in any time is that we're going to give you like actual real concrete stuff. Right. As opposed to just this like generic concepts and, you know, that sort of thing. So this will be first in the series, of, I guess, a fairly I don't know, probably seven or eight episodes at least. I'm not sure. That's the plan. That's the plan. I think one key thing as well, this is for people that have got minor anxiety up to the heightened state where you're, you know, constantly suffering, whether it's generalized anxiety or whatever. This, these principles apply to the whole spectrum. Yes, that is true. So, you know, whether you're just dealing with generalized anxiety or you're an, a housebound agoraphobic, you mm -hmm. probably have something here that's going to help out. That's um, it. Stick I think, around. Yes, yeah, stick around. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that I would like to say before we start, and, and Bill, you might have something to add to this, is some of, I think, what we're going to tell people might ruffle a few feathers here and there because we're going to intentionally tell people to be uncomfortable in certain instances. And this is, this is the downfall of many a recovery yes. attempt, I think. Where, <clears throat> yeah, in fact, we're going to talk about really in this episode specifically, which is sort of our intro to the whole series, is the fact that you have to be willing to be uncomfortable. Like, and and the, the cornerstone of this whole plan really is accepting that our inner drive, our, our innate drive for safety and comfort is you have to start ignoring that. Like your, your goal is not to be uncomfortable here. Your goal is to learn to be uncomfortable. And then at the end, you'll wind up comfortable again. I don't know if that exactly. makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100%. And that's... For me personally, I think that's one of the interesting dynamics for this series is that you've sort of, or it feels like you've sort of stepped over that, the comfort and the safety you're, you've managed to push through, whereas I'm, you know, kind of still <laughs> struggling to battle through that. But that's the it's dynamic right. of this podcast is that you're sort of evidence and living proof that you do this right. and it works. And I'm sort of living proof that if you don't do it. <laughs> well, you'll if you do what you always do, you'll get what you always get, or whatever the saying is. I yeah, can't remember. That's very true, and I think that will make this kind of a good deal because I think yeah, we yeah. can discuss the things that you're going through, and then how I managed to get through them already. So, exactly. Yeah, I think that's that's probably a good deal. And and I should say before we start too that so many people uh, that listen to my podcast or watch my channel will say, you know, ask me almost every day, are you cured? Like, are you mm -hmm, cured of mm -hmm. anxiety? And what mm -hmm. I always say is, it's a reasonable question to ask. I will never say that I'm actually cured. I'm still predisposed to those things. Yeah. Uh, when I get really stressed or sleep deprived, which is kind of all the time. But, uh, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, when things get really rough for me, I do get predisposed to anxiety. And once in a while, I still have an actual panic attack. But the difference is it doesn't really impact my life much anymore. So, yeah, yeah. you know, people always look at it when I'm, especially when they're asking for advice. And well, it's easy for you to say you're cured, but I'm never going to say I'm cured. I have to stay. Well, I think you know. it's safe to say that everybody suffers with anxiety at some point. Sure. You know, so nobody's ever going to be free from anxiety. There's always going to be yeah. that. But I think for you, maybe the triggers have become more noticeable. So the triggers are, are more, I don't know. I don't know what the word is. Um, I can predict the triggers, you know, I sort of yeah. know what they are. And yeah, whereas, yeah. you know, back in when I was really struggling, when you and I first met any, you know, like mm -hmm. a cloud going over the sun could yeah. put, me, put yeah. me in a panic. That doesn't happen anymore. Now, mm -hmm. you know, there are much more concrete things. I'm, I'm really stressed. I have a lot of business things going on, family things going on. There's a lot of pressure on me. It might come out. So but anyway, the point yeah, of yeah. it is I would definitely not say I'm cured in any way, shape mm -hmm. or form. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. hopefully you take that for what it's worth. We're all on the journey. Yeah, we are all on a journey. So um, let's get into it. How do you want to start? Well, we were, we were going to look briefly back at the article that you wrote a while back because it's, you know, 
the 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 methods don't change. True. The proof is in the pudding, so we need to just head over and and go through that and point out the the valuable information that's there. Okay, sounds like a plan. And I will probably in my video description I will link it on my site, Billy. You can obviously post it on Anxiety United. So you can read along, depending on whose channel you're watching or listening to. This is it. There'll Feel- be links to what, to all social media yep. platforms and yep. websites. and. So, you know, you guys can certainly follow along as we go. And I think, all right, so we'll get into it. And what I wrote this, I wrote this, like Billy said, many years ago. And full disclosure, it's really based a lot on the work of Claire Weeks, you know, which is, you know, Dr. Claire Weeks wrote many books about the subject many years ago. She's gone now, but her methods to me are still the gold standard. So a lot of this is just a watering down and a, and a consolidation of what she says. Which, incidentally, I think you'll find most of the paid for methods are probably based on the same principles. It's just that this is free. They to carry a- on. Yes, they absolutely are. That's absolutely correct. Yes, yeah, she started the whole thing and, and everybody else just sort of building on her work. So. It seems to be that way. Yes, all the most, at least the most effective things. So the way I started the article was pointing out that the single most common mistake, and I I used to make it too, it's what kept me held back for a long time. The single most common mistake that that I see people make when they're trying to overcome anxiety and panic issues, like agoraphobia and things of that nature, is that they think that they are trying to get to safety and comfort, which makes sense because we're, you're in a panic or you're having tremendous amounts of anticipatory anxiety, afraid to go out the door or whatever. You're mm-hmm. obviously not, you know, you're afraid and very uncomfortable. So the misguided direction I see people go in is to say, well, no, I have to find, you know, I have to get rid of that fear somehow and I have to get to comfort as quickly as I can. And I think that is the basic misassumption that keeps so many people held back. I think it's also the, the thoughts that you have to prepare yourself for these things before you even go into them. So with the bottles of water and the mints and yes. and parking nearer to stores and all those things, all those predetermined things that you think of before you go out and tackle whatever it is. That's they're true. also the the safety behaviors, comfort blankets, whatever they are. Well, we're going to talk about all those things as we go into each individual episode. But yes, that's true. And in our minds, we build we build all these things up to almost insurmountable obstacles because we know that we are going to be like terrified and horrifically uncomfortable and we, nobody wants to be that way. You know, the natural mm-hmm. drive mm-hmm. Is, is to feel safe and be comfortable. That's obvious. We all come from the factory wanting to feel that way. And so we wind up approaching this saying, well, my goal here is to get, you know, is to, is to wipe out the fear and to be mm-hmm. comfortable as quick as I can. And it's a huge mistake and we'll talk about why. Um, yes. Yeah. So, I make the assertion, and really Dr. Weeks made it first, that to really get past these things, to really get past them completely and, and not let them control your life or impact your life that much, you have to really learn to completely and utterly, and we use this word so often, I know you and I have talked about it so many times, you have to, you have to accept that fear. That's the like big one. With every fiber of your brain and body, you have to accept it, welcome it in, know what's going to happen. And you have to understand that it is baseless and ultimately harmless. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a, that's a big deal. I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. Cause... Well, I think it's one of the main questions that I've been asked when I've spoke of acceptance before is what is acceptance? And I think there's so many different variations of what people see as acceptance. But I think Claire Weeks said it best. It is, it's accepting everything. It's accepting the symptoms, the sensations, the, the worrying, flashing fears that you have. Yes. It, that is the basic principle is accepting the whole thing, not fighting against it, not going into it, accepting that this is going to be rough. Just accept that you're going to do it. That's yeah. That's my taking on it. It's, it's as basic as that. It really is as basic, basic as accepting that you may feel whatever you may feel. You may think what you may think, but you know that you're going to come out at the end of it, or perhaps you don't know, but you will. Well, and that's true. I think in the beginning, especially somehow something in us doesn't, isn't sure we're going to come out the other side. Mm -hmm. And that's what keeps us kind of paralyzed a little bit. And no, I'm not going to take a walk today, or I'm not going to leave the house today, or I'm going to find an excuse to cancel lunch with a friend or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you really accept that you you have to really, and this is counterintuitive to everything that our brains want us to do and our Mm -hmm. drive for safety and comfort is you have to really say, okay, this is, this is going to be rough. This is, I suppose it, 
you know. Sorry, it also comes down ex- uh, accepting that you are actually going to feel that you can't accept it as well. Yes. You know? So it's kind of <laughs> accept a- that you're going to be nervous, accept that you don't want to do this. Because that's what I did many walks recently on my channel that you can check them out. There'll be a link, but just accepting the fact that I was going to get out of the house every day, regardless of how I felt, I just got it into my head that that was going to become my new habit for the month. And right. just accepting that whether I was having palpitations or feeling dizzy or whatever it was, jelly legs, I accepted the fact that I was going to get out the door every day. And the progress there in, in just that one month period was when it's there to see. Yeah, that's very true. And that is a good series worth watching for sure. Um, because the difference between day one and day 30 is just, you know, it's like kind of crazy. I will just the point first, out. Right. I didn't. I I honestly didn't really see that much of a difference, but everybody that has seen it has said. But I think that's another negative aspect of having this. You just don't see progress for what it is. You don't see those little, little steps. That's true, and I think you're right. We're our own worst critics sometimes, and we expect yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I wasn't able to say walk to the mailbox, the post box. Sorry, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, I wasn't able to get to the mailbox yesterday, and now I'm at the mailbox today, so I must be fixed. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we judge ourselves very harshly when the next day is a struggle mm-hmm. to get to the mailbox again. Mm-hmm. So accepting is the, the main part of this. You have to accept. And I always say, for me, the sentence I use all the time that I tell people is, you have to be afraid before you cannot be afraid. So yep. you, you're just you're going to have to accept that the object of the game here is to learn how to be afraid. Because when you fully accept that fear, that's when you unmask the fear. And you, you expose it as baseless and, and illogical. You know, getting out of your car may seem like the most dangerous thing in the world to do. There, and you, you react so strongly and you stay, you know, kind of ensconced in the car. But there's really no danger when you get out of the car, out of the house or off the sofa or mm-hmm. to the supermarket, whatever it is. And you, you have to fully accept that you're going to feel afraid and highly uncomfortable. And then you will begin to acclimate and you will no longer fear those things. And this, you start to break the cycle. So stop going into it expecting that your your recovery program is going to immediately make you feel better. It, it yeah. won't. It's actually going to make you feel a little bit worse <laughs> before it makes you feel better. It's a long process. Yes. But one that, one that, of course, is worth taking. Of course. We get one opportunity. We do. And the rewards are huge. So we talked about this when we were talking the other day. Mm-hmm. The And even back then, I would say, so it's just like going to the gym or doing anything that might be unpleasant. You know, it's not the most fun thing that we do. Um, Mm -hmm. Back back in the days when I had to get up in the morning and force myself, and you've seen many of my old videos, right? We were sharing them back then. Yeah. Force myself to get dressed in the dead of winter, freezing, snowing, whatever. Like the first thing I would do, get in the car and drive around my neighborhood being terrified. Like I hated doing that. I freaking uh, keep it g-rated here i i freaking hated it (laughs) but i i hated doing it but i love having done it right well that's it you are you are where you are now because of the steps that you took back then yeah and i think you know accepting is like you said part of it is accepting that you're going to feel crappy but you're but that you'll feel like over the moon you know to use the the british term Mm -hmm. you know when, Mm -hmm. when you're done you feel so good about yourself like oh my god i freaking did that you know one of the things that was most impactful for me in the very beginning was seeing some of your early walks like to your yeah. local shop or to, to the mailbox and to see like how elated you are at the end. Yeah, the jubilation. Yes. You, you can't replicate that feeling. No. I, I managed to get a, a panic attack once on film when I was out grocery shopping. And like, I don't know whether other people can tell, but the way that I felt after I'd rode it out, I stayed in there on the second floor deep into the supermarket. And that feeling afterwards you you honestly do feel like you've never had a problem with anxiety and panic it's so clear right so if if we can get people to buy into this and like okay it's going to be okay it's okay to be afraid except that you're Mm going to feel terrible when you do this stuff Mm -hmm. but when it's over you feel like you've beaten like you've slain a dragon and i that's it that's the goal for me i think when i would do these things literally like you said you forgot that you ever had a problem being Mm -hmm. in that supermarket Mm -hmm. and even if it's only for a few minutes and then that feeling will last longer and longer as you go but for a few minutes i would literally think like why was i so afraid to do this this was so easy that's it like so question you question everything at that moment once you've gone through it and i'm by no means brave enough at the moment to put myself in that situation but i do know what it's like to go through it oh i've seen you do it that's i think you're selling i know yeah 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 i've seen you do it so 
so anyway, that's kind of the deal. And there's, there's some stuff in there about emo the emotional versus the rational side of your brain. And, and some people will argue that one way or the other. But, and I think when we say unmasking the fear and accepting that you're going to feel terrible before you can feel better and accepting that the fear is baseless and illogical, it's based on nothing. It's actually a fear of how you feel and it's a fear of fear. Um, and so intellectually, you may know that. I think we both talked about this too, right? You know yeah. there's really no danger. We know this, but yet... Well, that's it. I mean, how many times have we been through these periods of intense anxiety and survived? That's the evidence. That's all that we should need right. is that we, it hasn't put us into a situation where we can't get back to some kind of normality, you know, because that's where I class myself now, even though I still suffer with anxiety. I see this as my normal sort of life now. Yeah. But when I'm in the heightened anxiety, I always come back to this stage where I can still walk around. You know, maybe I can't go freaking dance around the town, but yeah, this is my normality now. And when I'm in a heightened state, I always come back to this. So it's never been that bad where I've ended up permanently panicking, and you know, right? right. Yeah, well, nobody's died. No well, one's you exactly. Know, done we insane. always come back down. You always come back. Exactly. You always let to tell the tale. And I think at the end of the series, one of the things I try and impress upon people is that you'll learn that whether you do something or you do nothing, you're always going to get back to this state of, yes. of, of okay. That's and, the point. And nothing is faster than something. So yes. as crazy as that sounds, and we'll talk about that later, doing nothing is mm -hmm. faster than doing something. So, so there's a recipe for success that I lay out in the article that have four things, the acceptance, current, courage, persistence, and patience. I don't know if we want to go through that a little bit. Um, 100%. That's kind of the cornerstone of we're going to build on all of those things as we go. But, and again, Dr. Weeks is the first one that said these things. I didn't make this up. But, uh, <laughs> so, you know, acceptance, we just talked about that. And courage, you want to talk about courage? I mean, it's a big part of this. You courage can't do is this the one. without it. You have, yeah. and, and I think we all have it. But this is where everybody gets tripped up. You, you do have yeah, to be yeah. brave. You have to be brave. I think that's probably the stumbling block for many a attempt at yeah. getting out there is just having the courage but I think with, with showing the courage, you also gain confidence. And I think those two things go kind of hand in hand. That's true. You just display that bit of courage. And even if it doesn't go fantastic, whatever it is that you're doing to try and overcome, right. the fact that you've, you've been able to show the courage to do it once means that you can do it twice, three yeah. times. A hundred you know? times, yeah. Exactly, as many times as it needs. And if the progress is even minuscule, it's progress that's worth making isn't it that's the point i think so I, I mean i think that you know if you're standing at the front door and you just can't bring yourself to go out you know you haven't done that or you can't do it without your husband or your wife or your mom or mm -hmm. whoever you know just opening that door even just opening I, the door is i think is, we spoke about it before sorry that's okay you, you, you said just i remember when you first started just putting your shoes on put tying your laces up yes that, that is a step in the right direction and yes. like you say just going to the door. You don't even have to open it. Just being prepared mentally yeah. to attempt to just take a step and then maybe tomorrow open the door. That, that's right. I mean, and and it's, it's tiny little building blocks, but every time you do one of those things, for me, you're right, lacing up my shoes or mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. going to the front door as opposed to knowing, like, oh, there's no way I'm going to the front door. Mm -hmm. You know, you're sh you are displaying courage when you do that. So I, I, so many people exactly. say, well, I can't do this because I'm not nearly as brave as you. Or we have mm -hmm. a mutual friend that would say all the time back in those days, like, well, the boys are out. It would be you and me and Chris, you know, in, in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, the boys yeah. are out doing these things, but they're way braver than me. And what I always try mm -hmm. to tell people is, no, you're as brave as me or anybody else exactly and it doesn't courage i always like to definitely point out courage doesn't mean that you're not afraid it means that you're afraid but you do it anyway that's mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. courage isn't not being afraid feel the fear and, and do, do it, it anyway. anyway right somebody wrote a book about that i believe yeah. so but unfortunately you can't do this without finding that inner courage and sometimes like billy was saying you have to find it in tiny little tiniest mm. little steps mm. And mm. that's okay. And then once you find it, suddenly you'll notice how much you have and it'll, it, you know, it'll build your confidence. It does. It does 100%. Yeah. So with me, with me at the moment, I'm going out quite a bit in the car. And every time I do it, I'm feeling more of an urge to, to get out of the car and just, you know, and that's just, I guess it's confidence and courage. It's just me displaying, feeling a bit more confident with me getting out there. And that just breeds more courage. It breeds more confidence. And that's a lot of it. It makes a big difference. You have to have yeah, it. Yeah. It's a big part of it. So the acceptance. But then obviously, about, yeah. yeah, I was going to say the next key 
is uh, persistence. Persistence, yeah. You want to talk about yeah. persistence? I mean, you know all about well, that's that. Just, yeah, that's the, <laughs> well, that's it. You've just got to keep doing it, haven't you? And no, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how low you're feeling or how sensitized you are, I guess whatever it is. It doesn't if you matter. don't, if yeah, if you don't get out there and do the work, then you can't expect it to improve. You've got to put yourself in these positions. And it's just like, uh, I mean, essentially, from where I sit, because I'm sort of a died in the wool behaviorist, you know, these problems, you have panic disorder, you have agoraphobia, generalized, these are cognitive malfunctions, they're bad habits our brains have learned. Mm -hmm. And you have to unlearn them. And unfortunately, unlearning them is slower than learning them, sadly, that's just the way yeah. we are. But their skills like so you have to rebuild the skill of going to the supermarket just like mm -hmm. you, just mm -hmm. like you would learn to speak french or ice skate or play a musical instrument this is it this you, is it you have to practice it you have to do it every single day and you can't wait till the days when you feel good and that's we, a mistake that yes, i've made in the past me too yeah 100 yeah, i think mm. we've all been there or we reward ourselves a little too much sometimes like oh i you know i did the supermarket yesterday so you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to be, I, yeah. I hear this all the time. I'm going to be kind to myself today. Yeah. I'm going to have a day off. I'm going to take care of myself today. And sadly, you cannot do that. You have to run roughshod over this by doing mm. it every day. So I can tell you that for me, like when I was doing a lot of that driving, when it was hard for me to get out of the house, I would get up and do it first thing in the morning and I would do it again, like two, three, four times a day. Mm -hmm. Which was monotonous and boring and tedious. But I have to tell you, going out and doing it at 6 p.m., was boring and I didn't want to do it, but it was so, even on one day, it was so much, the 6 p.m. drive was so much easier than the 6 a.m. drive. Yeah. Because I had done it three times. Of course, yeah, the, yeah. the next morning, the 6 a.m. drive was just as difficult as the one before. Yeah. So the progress was a little bit slow, but every day as often as you possibly can, no matter how you feel. In fact, you have to do it when you feel your worst. That's when the most I think I was going to say, yeah. That's what exactly when I learned the most about myself yep. is when I was feeling bad when I went out. Yeah. But nine times out of ten, I would feel so much better when I got back. 100% better. Absolutely. Or maybe not 100%, but yeah. No, but light years better because you, you, know, yeah, yeah. you start thinking like there's no way I'm going to do this. I don't want to do it. I feel terrible today. I'm weak. I'm tired. I'm whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm <laughs> racked with anxiety today. And somehow or other, 30 minutes later, you get back in the house and you feel like you can beat the world. So how does that happen? Well, that, it's because you've just learned that it didn't matter how I felt. That's right. Before I went out the door. Doesn't matter. That's exactly I, I right. Still, I still made it home. I'm still... Alive. Right, right. And, and in a lot of ways, talking about that, you know, I displayed courage and I accepted the way I felt and I got out yep. there. I was, you know, displaying persistence and I unmasked that fear and that discomfort as nothing. And now I feel great. So which leads us perfectly into point four. Yes. <laughs> you should talk about patience. I'm the least patient guy I know. <laughs> well, it's just, I think I don't know whether I've been patient in the past, but I feel that I am a lot more now is just seeing the, the steps as being so small, but it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big or small the steps are. Right. As long as they're in the right direction, I'm patient enough to just see. I always believe that I will get there. I will get there one day. That's cool. And I'm just patient enough to do what I have to do now, put myself in these positions, and we will get there. Well, that, that's true. And I think, you know, Dr. Weeks talks about allowing time to pass all the time, that displaying mm. patience. Mm. The, um, that was the toughest part for me because mm -hmm. I'm very impatient and I, I want results right now and I'm, I'm not yeah, patient yeah. with myself. And so I would find, and a lot of people make this mistake too, like, oh, I made it to the shopping mall, so therefore I must be better now. And, yeah. and when tomorrow, I, yeah. right, like tomorrow, yeah. that's it. And how many of us, and I think if you're watching or listening, and you could probably relate to this, I'm sure I used to do too. Like this was such a great day. And if I look back at some of my old YouTube footage from like 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. I would sit there and make videos at the end of the day, some of which I never published. And I could watch myself saying today was such a great day. Like I could feel it. I've turned the corner today. Mm -hmm. And then the next yeah. morning I'd be right back to where I was. And and it would just get me down, like, what happened? I thought I was over this yesterday. But So you're never going to be over it in a day or two days or a week. You can make huge steps in a couple of weeks onto yeah. that road. Yeah, yeah. But patience and, and, and kind of like um, accepting each thing that you do as a bit of progress and you're building slowly, 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 it's, it, it matters a lot. I think just one thing to note is that patience doesn't mean sitting on the sofa waiting yes. all day. I think you've mentioned that yes. in, a, in a past video. It's just that there, you can let time pass, but letting time pass while you're doing nothing isn't going to help. 
No, and, you know, that's a really good point. Patience doesn't mean waiting to get better because yeah, you, you yeah. won't. There's no like immune response that mm -hmm. fixes anxiety. Like if you get the flu, it'll go away because your body will get rid of it. Yeah. But this, I think, I, you know, I think maybe patience in the fact that if you suffer a setback, then don't let that drop you. Because in the past when I've suffered setback, I've felt like I'm completely back to square one. But yeah. I think with, with the regards of patience, it's just like, accept we're back to acceptance but even accept that setbacks will be a part of the process yep yep and that that goes back to persistence too even when you have a bad day it doesn't matter mm -hmm. you gotta get back out there again and do it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh yeah you're right patience patience factors into it all the time understanding that this time this process takes time and you know we should probably say i'm not talking about years uh, um but I think patience also, you have to keep that in mind in the framework because we run into a lot of people who say like, um, I, you know, I haven't, I barely leave the house or I can't leave the house without my husband or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And next week I have to go to a wedding 200 miles away. Yeah. And, you know, what do I do? Well, you have to understand that patience means time. So it's never too late to start, you know, start practicing getting in the car today for that wedding mm -hmm. next week. But you can't go from stuck on the sofa to going to the wedding you know, 300 miles away in, in two days. It's, yeah. Not without consequences anyway. Right. Say. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be a kind of a tough ride. You could still mm. do it. I'm not saying don't, do, don't do it, but you know, I think patience to me always spurred me on when I realized that this is a time takes time. Like, well, I have to start today then since yes. this is going to take some time. I have That's to start it. today, not yeah. Monday or wait for the new week or new year's day, or I have mm -hmm. to start mm -hmm. today, you know? So maybe that helps. There's no that. time like the present. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think that's sort of our intro and what I always, what I added, added, I'm reading, I'm sorry, but like I always say, it's a simple plan, but really hard to execute. Like this is a really simple set of steps to take, but since you're doing everything counterintuitive to what your body and brain wants you to do, you have to mm -hmm. ignore your natural instincts. You have to run toward the fear, toward the discomfort. It's hard to do this. It's hard. It's a simple plan, but it's hard to execute. But, but millions of people do it. Millions. I mean, I'm, I'm just some goofball from Long Island. I did it. Like, I'm, I say all the time, I'm nothing special. So if I did it, not everybody can do it. I, I'm, I'm sure of that. I'm 100% sure of that. It's good. It, well, that's it. There is only one way, essentially, to get yourself past this. Yeah. Unfortunately, well, I am uh, <laughs> in the loop. And I've been in the loop for a long time. But I take inspiration from you knowing that you're, I don't know. Well, you're just you're you're a step ahead. You are a step ahead, but you've showed your persistence. The persistence in your process is what I think has got you to the point that you are now. Obviously, you showed the courage and accepted, but it was your persistence, the repetition, and putting yourself in that position. And with me, I I kind of get to a point where I feel comfort instead of showing courage. I've spoke about that before, and that's yeah. you know I'll, I'll put myself in positions. I'll get to a certain level. And then I'll just sort of settle for that. Yeah. But this is about going the whole hog and, and getting right on through. I think at some point what I found too, you know, I guess we could chat a few minutes about this is for me, persistence, like there were times when I didn't want to do it. Of course, we all have mm. that, right? I'm nothing. I'm no different than anybody else. And when I found that when I would hit that, I would get to maybe a comfortable spot. Like, okay, I could drive to my office, now, the office that yeah. I had at the time. And I owned the company and I couldn't go to the damn office. How bad is that? Right. So I remember those. You days. Remember those days? How hard oh, that was yeah. so difficult. I, I couldn't go to the business that I owned. That was so hard. But um, mm. it was only like literally like three miles from the house with no traffic. I would get there in like six, seven minutes. Mm -hmm. And there were times when, OK, I would work to be able to get there. OK, now I can get there like that. That's enough. Like that's enough. And then something else would come up. Like my daughters were taking, you know, horseback riding lessons and that was like 10 miles from the house. and I couldn't take them to that. Mm -hmm. And, and I, that would spur me on like, no, this isn't enough. Like I, I haven't built enough here. This is enough. So sometimes for me, persistence was fueled with getting angry a little bit. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. not, I don't want this. I don't, I, I don't want to live like this. So mm. however way you find it, you know, I was going to say, yeah, whatever the driving force is, go with it, be angry, be upset, be whatever. But mm -hmm. I think we should probably circle back for just a second too with acceptance, acceptance never to me and maybe maybe you disagree or have a different view. So mm. I've heard people take that word acceptance and say, well, I just accept that I'm like this. You know, oh, yeah, you, mean, no. you, you mean just accept that I'm like this? No, mm. <laughs> I mean, that's not no. what I mean. No. Yeah, you have to accept it. 
the, the accept the difficulty of the process. Don't just accept being this way if you don't want to yeah, be this yeah. way. Yeah. Mm. So. Uh, I suppose, yeah. Accept the way that you feel and just go for it. You've, got, you've yeah. got to put your, if you want any kind of normal life, I don't know what normal is these days, but if you want to be able to go out and do the things that you want to do, that you dream about, right. then the four steps, accepting the way that you feel while you're doing it, not just accepting it and sitting there and saying, this is it. You know? Yes, that's true. So, you know, acceptance doesn't mean just accept your lot in life. This is the way yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, I'm always mm. going to be agoraphobic or whatever it is. So I think that's kind of the intro of the article. And the next episode, we're going to talk about that, that foundational concept that says that danger isn't real. And we could probably yes. spend 45 minutes on just that. But that's what we're going to do that's next. It. Yeah. That's it. So I don't know. Do you have anything else you want to add on this one? I'm happy. This was just a short intro to the series that we're putting out. And uh, we'll put some effort in try and help me yes. while we help while we help you <laughs> that's I, why i'm here i think it's going to be good i think we'll see yes i think it's going to be good and, and i urge billy throw out you know let's what's your your social stuff what are your contacts oh we're... it's all uh twitter we are at anxiety united facebook.com slash anxiety united but you can find all the info on anxietyunited.com but i to be honest i'm trying to steer myself away from getting bogged down in talking to other people about so i'm staying off social media okay that's basically what i'm trying to say very so if fair. you want to find me <laughs> very fair so if you want to ask a question ask me because billy's going to yes you. <laughs> no, youtube <laughs> youtube is what i'm, I'm, I'm sure. i enjoy making youtube videos whether they're helpful stuff or whether it's me just rambling on yeah that's that's where my uh, focus is at the minute. Very good. So if you're watching on my channel, then definitely go to Billy's channel and subscribe and check out his videos because they're tremendously yes. helpful, I think. You're and there's lots some, of them. Yeah, there's lots of them, and you'll see someone <laughs> actually doing that work. I'm just blabbering at you and telling you what to do. You could watch Billy like, actually do yeah, it. Yeah, you're, you're the technical, you're the science, you're the brain, yeah. and I'm just the... Actually, guinea pig. You're actually out of the guinea pig. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> yeah. That's harsh. Um, I don't so, mind. I've been called worse. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so um, if you need to get to me, uh, my website is thatanxietyguy.com. On Twitter, at thatanxietyguy. Facebook is also facebook.com slash thatanxietyguy. I take, throw any questions you want or in the comments section here on YouTube or if you're listening as a podcast episode on the website. So you want to ask questions, bring I was going to say, don't. Yeah. Brain. Don't forget that Anxiety Guy podcast on uh, iTunes. Yes, that's true. If you're on iTunes, you can find my podcast. I haven't been publishing a lot lately, but by all means, subscribe there. But uh, as we go, we'll take questions. So if you want to send questions my way or Billy's way, we'll incorporate them into the future episodes and you know, follow along, hopefully get something out of it. That's it. Questions in the comments. Yes, on YouTube. There'll be links links in the description as well to yeah. everything you need. It's going to bury you in links and information. So <laughs> yeah. Bring your shovel to the next episode. <laughs> All right, folks, I guess we're going to end it up here. Billy, thank you. It was cool. It's good. All right, man, see you in the next one. You will indeed. Yep. See you there. Bye.